So recently somebody said in the comment section that I need to get a mountain shirt and that I should sell that. I, I, I already have a mountain shirt and I already sell it. It's, it's on my website. Train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Land Bodybuilding, and today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about why some people never reach their genetic potential in natural bodybuilding. Now, the great thing about this subject is that everybody is going to have different genetic potential, of course, right? Some people have better genetics for bodybuilding or basketball or football or wrestling or, or jogging or marathon running. I mean, there are a number of different genetic, some of us just have different genes, you know? And that is going to influence what we are best suited for, but that does not mean that we cannot reach our genetic potential in bodybuilding. So one thing I wanna say is that one of the biggest things that prevents people from reaching their genetic potential is that they do not understand that everybody is subtly different. And I've talked about that a million times on this channel, but it's just really relevant because some people do better with higher carb, high protein diets. Some people do better with moderate or higher fat, high protein diets. Some people do better with um, different sources of protein. Some people need more red meat. Some people need more chicken and fish, maybe more organ meat. What I'm saying is that only through experimentation can you really find out what works. And a lot of times people will watch their favorite fitness person and they'll start with the template that that fitness person is using but they're afraid to deviate just a little bit to find out if they can get some different results. And the funny thing is, is that you'll become your own worst hypocrite. Like I've said, uh, as you train for years, you start to realize that, okay, sometimes this diet works better and then sometimes a different diet works better. Or sometimes one training program works great and then another training program works great. Or one range of motion works perfect and then a different range of motion works better at some other point. So being open in any one moment to what is happening in your body really changing this bodybuilding path into the meditation path like I've talked about, that is what's going to help you reach your genetic potential. And so many people right now in the world are following dogma. And a lot of times that dogma comes under the pretense of scientific study and saying, this is the way. Meanwhile, that scientific study doesn't tell you all of the stipulations around how they came to certain conclusions. And you may be making false leaps of logic on what applies to you in this given moment, right? So if somebody is mildly diabetic, obviously their diet will have to be different than somebody who has a healthy blood sugar level or a good functioning pancreas, right? Uh, such as, you know, some people who are diabetic also or have blood sugar ups and downs might benefit from eating pancreas enzymes as a part of the nutritional regime. So because of this, because of all these different variables at work, the only way to really help a person or to protect them from following dogma or getting lost in the never-ending library of information and misinformation is to help them be aware to what is happening here and now. Here and now. Like for instance, when you're doing a dumbbell curl, pay attention to where you are feeling the tension. Right? Are you feeling it right here in the elbow? Are you feeling it in here? Are you feeling it more in the shoulder? What's happening? Now let's adjust, let's rotate out. Now where are you feeling the tension, right? Now rotate in and, and pronate the hands. Now where are you feeling the tension? You see, this is where bodybuilding can become a very strong awareness growing path because you start to apply movement in your own environment and sensation, what is happening. Now, as you become a master of this, you'll start to also apply this to diet. When I drink this tea, say having a stinging nettle infusion, which I highly recommend, it's unbelievable stuff. If you wanna watch the video of how to make one, watch the video called how to make a home pre-workout. I, I made the video here, so check that out. But when you drink this, how do you feel? How do you feel 10 minutes after, 15 minutes after, 20 minutes after? And getting in touch with this sensation will help teach you which sensations help you grow or help you have more energy in a workout and which sensations kill your energy in a workout or deplete you in some way, shape or form. So growing your awareness 
in all these different ways is how you will learn to reach your genetic potential because now you will start to become conscious of how the forces are acting. When you bring your knees way over your toe to do a front squat, are you getting knee pain? Are you getting knee tension? And then later on, two days later, you're getting knee pain. Well, perhaps now you know that that type of knee tension is preceding knee pain. So now when you get that type of tension, you will adjust your movement or adjust the exercise to make sure that you're not getting knee pain or injuries in the knee. You see, so you start to read the tensions kind of like Beethoven reading the musical notes, right? He just has a feeling for the musical notes of what's happening and therefore making the symphony. So the muscles and the tension and the diet and the exercises and the range of motion, this all becomes a symphony that you start to dance with and start to become a master of. But it's only through growing your awareness. And this is how you reach your genetic potential. And most people spend the first five to 10 years in their training, training unconscious, just comparing one piece of information to the next, but not deepening the feeling or the sensation in the body at the same time. That's the most important thing. Most of the guys running around the gym have their earphones in and they're listening to music and, or a podcast and they're so busy with that that they're not paying attention to what's happening in the body as they are performing an exercise until of course it's too late. Usually when they get an injury or something snaps or something like that, then they're conscious, then they become conscious, right? But before that, they're not paying attention to the subtleties of how the tensions are playing out, of how the different sensations are playing out, what's really happening. You know, eight reps gives me this type of pump. 20 reps gives me that type of pump. There are different types of pump. Most of you don't know that. Most of you probably don't know that. Some of you do. That you get a different type of pump from doing high reps and getting that super deep burn as opposed to doing heavy weight and that deeper kind of torn up pump, right? Different types of pumps. So once you pay attention, you'll start to realize sensation and then seeing what happens in your body afterwards and you'll start to see there's certain sensations that mean muscle growth and certain sensations that mean muscle depletion. And through learning to master these sensations, you will reach your genetic potential. You will grow more than the people who are training just unconsciously or eating unconsciously. So yeah, I hope this helps you out in your training. Thanks a lot for watching. And if you need to get home, just go to naturalgallantbodybuilding.com and thanks to the Patreon supporters and take care for now. Mountain.